This video will teach you how to write effective introductions and conclusions using the layer cake method. So let's start. I'm sure the first question you have to ask yourself is, what are the layers? There are four layers to this layer cake method, and once you learn them, it will be so easy to write introductions and conclusions. The first layer of an introduction or conclusion is the attention getter. These are a few sentences using a technique that grabs the reader's attention. Next is a transition. This is a phrase that moves the reader from the attention getter into a specific topic of the essay. You can even form this in the phrase of a question. The next layer is the main ideas. The purpose here is to show the reader what the points will be made in the essay. So you will write a sentence for each point that you make for each body paragraph. The last layer is the thesis statement. It answers this question. What am I proving in this paper? Now, in order to write attention getters, you might want to know a couple of techniques. You can actually start it off with an interesting fact. Or you can create a story or a scenario. You invent a character, you invent a situation, you invent a place, and you create this little story that helps put the reader in the mind frame of what the essay will be about. Another effective method is to describe something. And a really good way to do this is to use the internet to help you get the inspiration on images. So if you wanted to write on a particular topic, I would look up the images that represent that topic and then use the description technique to describe it using the five senses. It's a really great way to get the reader's attention. You can even compare or contrast two things. And one of the ways to do this is with time. You can actually compare or contrast the past to the present or the present to the future. You can look at the way things used to be and the way things are now. You can compare or contrast two characters or depends on what the essay is really doing. But it's a great technique. You might even decide how you want to start the attention getter. Do you want this to be a positive thing or do you want it to be very negative? really depends on how you want to get the mood of the reader involved in this. And finally, you have to ask yourself thesis statements. You really have to think. Do you have to inform the reader about something? Is that the purpose of the essay? Or maybe you have to persuade the reader. Maybe it's a call to action. Maybe they have to do something. And so you want the reader to really think about what the purpose of this essay is. Sometimes the purpose of the essay is really about comparing or contrasting two things. And so that's what the purpose of the essay is. And your thesis statement would have something to say about the comparison or contrast of these two things you're looking at. The main questions you have to ask yourself is, what do you aim to prove in the essay? What is the purpose of this essay? The answers to those questions help you form the thesis statement. The other thing to help you write thesis statements is to understand sentence structures that help create them. For an informative kind of essay, you might want to start your sentence structure off like this. For a cause and effect paper, you might want to start the sentence off with the word since or because because it already sets up the sentence structure with a cause and effect concept. If you're comparing something, you might want to use this kind of sentence structure. If you're using contrast, you might want to use a transitional word like although or even though, because the sentence structure automatically is set up to show contrast. If you're persuading the audience, it might be a good idea to start with the word if. It's a persuasive technique. And depending on how you write it, it might be worded where the last part of that sentence is either negative or positive. So you have to think about how are you wording the sentence that leaves the reader either feeling really, really bad about the situation or very enlightened and inspired. So it depends on how you word it. But these are things you have to think about when you're creating thesis statements. And sentence structure is very important to help you do that. The next thing I want you to consider is the function of an introduction. Of course, we know it now grabs the reader's attention. 
It tells the reader the path of the essay's points, and it does this by introducing the point of each body paragraph. It explains the purpose of the essay at the very end, with his, which is the thesis statement. Here's what an introduction does not include. There's no quotes to prove points, there's no data, and there's no explanations. What you have to understand is you have to save all of that for the body paragraphs. The introduction merely introduces what you will explain in depth later in the essay. You also need to know the function of a conclusion. So it reminds readers of the essay's points of each body paragraph. And it then states the thesis again, which reminds the reader of the purpose of the essay. What a conclusion does not include is material that was not already mentioned in the essay, so you don't want to bring up anything new. There's no quotes to prove points, there's no data, and there's no explanations. It just reminds the reader of what you already mentioned. This will be more important when you write longer essays that are 10 and 20 pages long, because by that point at the end of the essay, the reader might not remember everything in the beginning, so the conclusion becomes a very integral part of the essay process. I just want to share a couple more tips with you at the end here, so really pay attention to these tips. First of all, I no longer want you to write the introduction first. I know many of you learn this in high school. Of course it makes sense, right? You start the essay writing the introduction, and you write the essay start to finish, and you finish writing the conclusion. But let me ask you this. How do you introduce the essay's points if you have yet to write them? And what winds up happening is students start writing introductions, but they've never even written the essay yet. And so what happens is, as they write the body paragraphs, they might change their mind. And then that means one of two things. Either the introduction has to change to match what they've now written, or they don't revise the introduction, and the points they put in the introduction no longer match what is in the essay. So that's what winds up happening. Be careful about that. You want to write the introduction and conclusion together. And the reason to do this is that you can play off of the introduction into the conclusion and bring the essay full circle. So you continue the introduction's attention getter for the conclusion. And you can either do one of several things. If you did a possibly a story in the beginning that seemed maybe negative, you might revisit the same story in the conclusion and make it more positive, or vice versa. You can con contrast two scenarios or stories. And you do have to think about the positive and negative aspects of attention getters. If one is negative in the intro, you might want to make the other one positive in the conclusion. So creating stories helps you revisit it in the conclusion and bring the essay full circle. You can even use time again. If you looked at past into the present in the introduction, you can look at the present situation into the future for the conclusion. There are all sorts of different scenarios on doing this. If you use description, for example, maybe the description started off negative, and you can also revisit that same description and describe it in a more positive light. There are all sorts of things you can do here. But when you write the introduction and conclusion together, you're able to make these decisions. So remember the layer cake method, and if you need any help, remember I'm always there to do so. Thanks for watching.